Hello and welcome to this first edition of Painting the Characters from the Dark Souls universe. I thought it would make sense to start with the single most recognisable character from the game, Sigmar of Katarina. So let's engage in some jolly cooperation as we go through my steps to Painting the Onion Knight. And engage in jolly cooperation. Hmm. Hmm. Oh! So I'm starting off here with a model that I have 3D printed and I have sprayed on some black primer. You always want to start with a coat of primer before you start painting. So I kind of like to get my paints in order. You got to give them all a good little shake since acrylics tend to separate when left alone for a while and I like to get them all in a lovely line. Lovely even line. Now this is quite a simple model to paint because it primarily focuses on dry brushing. So we'll start off with some lead belcher onto a dry brush. The method with dry brushing is to have as little wet paint left on the brush so as to not slap a load of liquid on our onion. So I tend to sort of spread the paint out across some thick paper. Or cardboard is also pretty absorbent and is a handy alternative. Then just brush off any excess onto some kitchen roll and you'll have a pretty dry brush. Now with your brush you just want to do some very light broad strokes up and down, keeping the paint layer very thin. This will make sure you're getting a nice brush metal look. You'll notice I'm applying more layers to the top of the model. That's where the light source will be coming down from as our lovely Sigmaya sleeps. So you'll be getting a brighter colour of paint coming from the top and darker as it goes down. To add some extra light and shine to certain raised parts of the model, you want to chuck on some thin layers of Necron compound. As you can see here on the legs, the lower parts are more shaded and the raised parts where the light would be shining seem brighter. It's almost as if I'm dusting the paint on. Yeah, some little hand action here for you. Now applying the same dry brush technique, we'll be using Bugman's Glow on the bricks for a nice reddish tint. So I've been painting now for just under a year. I'm primarily an editor and animator in my day job, but painting models and miniatures and scenery making is something I've always had a passion to do. So hopefully as we go along and learn together, we'll move on to bigger and better models each time. Now that we've finished painting the walls with the Bugman's Glow, we're gonna do the same with a darkish gray. I'm using Mechanica Standard Grey and gently applying to the underside of the bricks to give a duller shade. We won't be doing any advanced techniques for this model, we'll just be sticking with dry brushing mainly for it, as it's quite a nice easy first model to get into. And because bricks and walls aren't typically one colour, I'll put a lighter shade on the upper sides, using Zandri Dust to give a lighter brown tint. But if you're looking to make your own Sigmire, you don't have to use reddish or brownish colours. The wall he sat on in Sen's Fortress is surrounded by a lot of greenery, so you could use some greens, you could use some blues, or you can just stick with greys. It's really up to you. Have yourself a little stretch too. Why not? Now finger gun your way over to a layer brush. This is just a small brush from Citadel Paints. Now we'll be painting the leather parts of Sigmire's armour. With this I use a wet palette because acrylics dry so fast. Wet palettes keep your paint wetter for longer, which not only reduces paint wastage, but is also very useful for more advanced techniques like wet blending or glazing. I usually use a cheap brush just to pop the paint on the palette. Going back in with my small layer brush, I'll just start to apply a thin layer of Rhinox Hide first as a base. A tip I learned way too late in painting models was to always water down your acrylics. Never use them straight out of the pot and onto your models because you'll often lose the finer details and it just becomes sort of like one blob of colour. Always thin your paints down with water or using a wet palette and you'll get thinner coats that will give you more control. Now the Rhinox Hide layer is done, I'm just going to go take a break. And we're back. Now using lighter shades of Mournfang Brown and Zandri Dust, just start to add some different variations of colour to the upper parts and the edges of the leather to add some texture and detail. Funnily enough, it was the Dark Souls board game that got me into painting models and miniatures. It was shortly after that that I bought a 3D printer and the addiction to this hobby really begun. 
and I found that I've never been fascinated by a game much like I have been with Dark Souls 1. I've been fascinated by the lore, the story and the characters, and the morose scenery. It's a game that really gripped me in a lot of different ways, and it's amazing that I can just 3D print the characters and paint them and bring them to life. Especially with Sigmai, he's such a staple character, and he's so happy and jolly when you meet him, but his story is so sad. If you haven't watched it, I'd really recommend watching Vati Vidya's Prepare to Cry series on YouTube. He goes into so much depth about the lore behind the characters in Dark Souls, it's really fascinating. I think he's starting to look okay. Now, using a small glaze brush, I'm going to use a very watered down Abaddon Black gently apply a thin layer where the shadows would be to really add some contrast to the lighter parts. Now I'm no expert on glazing or wet blending, but I have found with using a very thin layer of watered down Abaddon Black, it does create a thin wash that adds some realism to your models. And at the opposite end of this, I'll be using a thin layer of white scar to add some highlights to the tops and edges and to the ridges of his armour. If you get any paint in the wrong place or accidentally make a mistake, don't worry. If the paint is thinned enough, you should be able just to wipe it up with a clean brush or just smudge it with your finger like I did there. Mistakes can happen, you know, I'm no painting expert. And I found that having thinned acrylics is a lot more forgiving when I do make mistakes. But the main thing is just having fun and learning as you go. Now that he's all painted, we're gonna decorate him. I'll be using some fine burnt grass, some foliage, and some fine sand ballast. You can get these at any model supply store. And with some standard modeling PVA glue and a cheap brush, start to apply the glue to the top of the wall. Normally you would mix some water in with the PVA to get extra coverage and thin it out a bit, but I, I forgot. Now sprinkle on some fine ballast to act as sand or some light dirt. Then on top of that, add on the burnt grass. Now just repeat this process for all the dips and ridges on the wall. You know, I've never actually gotten to the final ending of Siegmeier's quest. I've only ever gotten as far as being in Lost Isolith with him when he has to fight the Chaos Eaters. I always seem to kill them too quickly, or not quick enough. So I haven't actually had the playthrough where I get the final scene in Ash Lake. Which is sad, but it looks cool. Once that's done, you want to grab some of the clumps of foliage, dip them in some of the PVA, and start placing them around the wall. Spread them out across it, and you'll get quite a nice realistic looking wall for our sleepy onion. Give them a couple of little love taps to knock off any excess, and just use a cheap brush to brush off any of the extras lying around on it. And there we have him, a dozy Sigmire that's completely absorbed in thought. Thank you for tuning in everyone. I really appreciate the support on here and on the Instagram account to see it grow so rapidly within one year of setting it up. It's quite amazing. So tune in next week for some more painting and don't forget to like and subscribe, leave a comment and I'll see you next time.